All right, so yes, today we are going to be talking about cutting stones because I have uh, a video that I'm making uh, kind of using one of my students' lectures, or not lectures, one of my students' lessons in it because this game, um, as you may or may not know, I kind of love the topic of Aji that uh, kind of seems to be the separator art between like our you going to be like able to rank up as a Q, a Don, like whatever, kind of comes back down to the use of Aji. Seems to be really, really important. And kind of like the beginning of like using Aji and stuff kind of tends to usually revolve around cutting stones. It seems to be like a lot of the time. So I thought, all right, let's like get to the beginning of like that idea and let's examine cutting stones. Like how do we handle them? What do we do with them? Uh, like Yeah, that's 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 the thing that's right there. Cutting stones, the only stones worth saving is a very good thing to point out there, Shark Pro. And I know people are watching on YouTube later. I suck, so I still don't have a way for you to look at their their comments. I'm sorry. That's just the way it works right now. Suffice it to say, that's an interesting idea, and it's also an idea that's not always true. Like, the question of, like, when do we actually save the cutting stone? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes, um... Yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna look at all that. We're gonna look at all that. We're gonna look at all that. Uh, now, of course, all my lectures, almost all my lectures, uh, usually take games from the professional world, because, well, since I'm making up a lot of my own material, it's good to, like, have examples from people who really 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 know what they're doing kind of like backing up what I'm saying otherwise it's just you know who cares what I have to say um, so yeah the first game we're going very very large and we're looking at a game of he uh doesn't really matter who it is because not going over the entire game clearly but we are gonna look at he uh, said is black this game um, don't worry about like opening and stuff. I am not really going to be paying a lot of attention to it. I'm just pretty much setting up a board position so we can see how these cutting stones became important. Mini Chinese been set up. Sure, why not? Pincering, so we're clearly growing all of the things. You, uh, you, 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 you. There we go. Now, cutting stones start to come up about when we get involved into this. Because black is aggressively approaching to see what white wants to do. White says, I'm just going to make a wall. And then black doesn't hane, and he continues, because they're kind of like fighting for sente right now. Like, first person that blinks loses sente. Like, if you extend again, black's completely alive, and we can go elsewhere, right? If we play the normal variation, this is like not really part of the lecture, but if we play the normal variation, bam, lost sente, you can go do something else. Here, they're kind of just like fighting for sente. So if this looks weird to you, then now you know the reason. White plays the Hane, and lo and behold, we've got a cutting stone. And thus, we have fodder for our lecture. Thank you very much, Yi Sido. So, Right away, when things are getting cut, you can see like which part of the whole things that are getting cut are important. Uh, right now, it's pretty self-explanatory that the group with the five liberties uh, not really as vital right now as the stone with the two liberties. So we're obviously going to strengthen that. Now, white is helping himself. However, we have another question that's arise in this game. Like right now, we've got a cutting stone. That cutting stone's at G16. So like what Shark Pro just said, like some one Don told me that cutting stones are only st are the only stones worth saving. So according to that like kind of idea, we would want to really save these G16 stones right now. Only problem is, where where are we going to go with these stones? Like we can, we can play a move here and like see what we're going to do. See where black's going to go. Where white's gonna go, all that good stuff. White says I'm gonna attack from here and strengthen my stones. We could still just run out our stones, but the question becomes like, what are we doing with these stones? Are we just running? Can we profit anywhere by running these stones out? Is anything weak right now? How about it? Are, 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 
or either of these like groups. Uh, you know, actually that's bad. Let's just label them A and B, like A and like B. Are either of these two groups of whites like weak? Are we getting strength to attack something, or is that possible? Or are these uh, two groups of whites pretty strong? What do you think? We, we weak? We strong? What do you think? Because if we're going to save our cutting stones here as black, we need to know why we're saving them. So what do you think? Are these, are, uh, these groups of white strong or weak? Weak or strong? Maybe not weak, but maybe not efficient. Eh, it might not be efficient. <clears throat> might not be efficient. Might not be efficient. But uh, yeah, I'm agreeing. Pretty much, they're uh, they're they're pretty they're pretty strong. Like they both have bases. The odds of surrounding them. Eh, not 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 sure about that. One. Not sure about that. One. So we could run, but we're not really running to attack anything. We can identify that by the fact that there's like the weak groups just aren't currently here. So can we grow a big area by running them away? And I see like white on the left, I see white on top. Not sure if we can grow a large area right now by running them away. So like we can't really identify a purpose to actually saving these, to these uh, cutting stones. So black says, I'm not going to. Now that looks weird, like, oh my god, like, why is he doing this? Why is he cutting? Why are the stones there if he's not going to save them? And we're going to get to that in a moment. Like, right now he's trying to grow up the area. Okay, cool. White's like, lolol, I'm going to make the area on the left hand side large because you're not saving your cutting stones. Those are all weak. I can expand, attack you, bim, bam, boom, you're going to resign. But here is where the cutting stones actually become useful again. Because now, white just said, I want to make this area nice and large. But we do have our stones here still. So drawing them out is still bad. We don't want to commit to a group because then it gets something white to attack. But we can use them lightly. We can just kind of play with our cutting stones. It's like, I'm going to maybe reduce you or maybe try and live. You can do, I can do either or. It's fine. I'm not committing. I, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not making commitments here. I can just do one or the other. I don't care which. White says, I like my territory. Black says, again. Yeah. The threat of them coming back to life there, uh, GG Petty, and they can be used as a reduction because of that. Like right now, we don't care if white tries to go back and kill off our cutting stones again, because we're just kind of reducing, we're kind of threatening to expand. The cutting stones, are you going to do something about them, or are you not? And in this particular game, of white counterattacking, we see this really great way Is that out of order? No, it's not. This is a really great way that black gets shape in the middle, and by getting shape in the middle, he's able to hook up those cutting stones. White tries to do something about them, but it's a little bit too little, a little bit too late. Like right here, trying to keep things separated again, but this is not going to work. So he tries to sacrifice. Trying to go after shape. All that good stuff. But alas, black connects up. So the cutting stones were useful here. They helped us uh, reduce this area. Because white didn't want to just, you know, be like, all right, I guess, I don't know, I guess you're, uh, uh, I guess you're just going to do something like this now. And um, you've connected everything up and you're nice and strong. Right? You couldn't play just like passively and get territory. Try, you had to try to like keep things disconnected. But it's kind of hard to do.
even tried to make black heavy. But no, the cutting stones are pretty useful when we have a nice solid shape in the center. So this is one way of using them. Not running them out immediately, because that would have given you a target. Uh, straight, like, painted on your back. Not sure where we were going, not sure how we were going to profit from it. Instead, we can just use them as light stones. They can just be a threat on the, for on the field that your opponent has to deal with. Like, if you want to try to grow this area, okay. Do something about all this. So that was the first really clear-cut, easy way of seeing like how you can use cutting stones. We can identify if it's worth to save them right now. Like, if our opponent did this, for example, and not played K16, then we could probably play here again. Because if our opponent just decides to like connect on up, then we have a wall spanning half the board. We're happy those cutting stones. Amazing value. Amazing value. If our opponent doesn't do that, okay, great. He defended the right stone. Then we'll come back to it later. So that's, that's the first example. Um, and played recently, by the way. This one is, um, one second. All right. Sorry about that. I had to go deal with something rather annoying. No, we did not kill any animals. Oh my god, relax. Calm down, calm down, calm down. All right, so that was our first uh, really good example. Uh, let's minimize that board, so I don't use it again. Our next really great example is another evaluation on like the idea that we need to, again, and I'm so happy that you, you mentioned that, Shark Pro that we need to save our cutting stones. Uh, this game, in case you know, you're know you curious, uh, our favorite player nowadays, Shin Jin So, was playing against a, another Korean player. Let's see which way to cut this? Top first, okay. Shin was black. Not that that matters, we're not going over the entire game, we're just looking at really great examples of how to deal with cutting stones and that kind of stuff. Could play orthodox, could approach the bottom left. I usually would. I even usually say that's a better idea. But what do I know? Shin approaches top left. That's okay. We get into a Jiseki here where we immediately see an attempt to make a very large area. Left hand side, make a make a big area for ourselves. Okay. Easy peasy. white cuts, and now we have to go kind of through that evaluation again. Like, what, is, what do we do here? We could back off immediately and save cutting stones. And get a base here. A little bit low, but we could do it. A little bit low, but we could play this way. Black says, no, I am going to play elsewhere and invite a little bit of a complicated Jiseki. I will freely admit the game does get a little bit complicated. Easy to follow, like most of uh, Shin's games are, though, don't worry about that. But we do get into a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a sticky situation where we're playing uh, the, the Taisha. And rather than uh, explain this variation, not gonna. Whoops, my bad. That's a mistake. Sorry. Rather than explain this variation, we're going to instead kind of go through it at quite a click. You can see here, Black's just kind of getting the influence. Why is he in the influence? Because White said he wanted influence because he made that triangular shape on the bottom right hand side. So it kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. So he picks a variation that gives him the most outside influence to deal with the triangular shape. Makes sense. Kind of thing you can only do if you really, really know your Jiseki. So you can kind of appreciate his knowledge of Jiseki, and that's about all I'm going to say about the, the Taisha that he chose. That's about all I'm going to say about that. 
Because what that, because that doesn't matter. What matters right now are the cutting stones that we're going to be seeing. Um, where was that? That, 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 right. So we do that, then we go play there. And then that gets over there, and then we go that. And then this goes up. We go up. He comes out. We connect. And then we have to deal with this. Okay. So a couple of things here. Because we, we are dealing with multiple cutting stones. First thing we have to deal with is which one of these do we strengthen wouldn't make sense to not strengthen E5 because if we just like play something like this it leaves cuts behind and whatever. Don't care about that at all. We are strengthening outside cutting stones. This time we know we're going to do it because A, we either looked it up on Wikipedia, or two, we can see that we're keeping two weak groups separated. Like right now, both E3 and D5 are in trouble, so it makes sense to actually aid these cutting stones. To be fair, we have multiple cutting stones on the field. We could also aid the other ones, but we chose not to because it kept us low. So it gives you low and uninteresting. You might not want to play that. It's kind of small. Maybe try and do that sometime in the future. We saw this, which is pretty straightforward. White's trying to put a lot of pressure on the cutting stones. Black is left with no choice but to defend himself, slowly but surely. Now, throughout all of this, we're kind of dealing with that outside. But you notice that we're not going back and dealing with the original pair. Like, these are cutting stones as well right now. And we don't really care about these. Why do we not care about these? Because the outside is a lot larger. So we can see a break to that rule again of uh, saving the cutting stones. Uh, the outside is a lot larger. If we save try to save this stone, we're surrounded by white. We don't really know if we can do that. Uh, the outside could, but where are we running to? We have, we're again running somewhere. Uh, not really trying to get anything for ourselves, we're just kind of fleeing at that point. So these cutting stones don't seem to matter right now, whereas these certainly did because they kept these groups kindly separated. So these cutting stones in the middle had purpose, the ones in the upper left didn't really have purpose, so we know which ones we're, uh, we're going to be saving. Or, like I said, or maybe you didn't know any of that, you just looked it up on Wikipedia. Either way, you made the right choice. Um, I think there's one other set in this game, right? Another set. Yes, 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 yes. Blah 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 blah. Um, I think there was. Fast forward real quick. See either this one or the next one. Might be the next one. Reading, reading, reading. Yeah, it's the next one. Alright, I'm gonna skip to that one instead then. The rest of this one might just be turned into a actual real board review. This game is really amazing. This next uh, one, you might not be really aware of the player. Um, Essentially, there's been a pretty reasonably strong player from back when Yi Cheng Ho was, you know, just ranking up, uh, coming into his strength. Called uh, Mak Chin Siak. He's really, really good. Nine Don forever. Not one of the top players in the world, but not bad either. He's uh, white in this particular game. 
And again, kind of like the last game, we see it opening up this way. Only the difference is, this time we're going to enclose the bottom left hand side, which is a little bit old school, but it's still okay. Uh, this encourages black to enclose, yep, 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 yep. White attaches, and if you know this Chiseki at all, you then know that there are cutting points that arise. Here, for example, we have a wall with a cut point. Okay. White extends. Black backs off, as you would expect here. Goes for the enclosure. Trying to use a lot of influence, right? But then we have this cutting point to really worry about. And how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to deal with this? Well, first we have to identify what's weak right now. And pretty straightforward, matter of liberties once again. We've got two liberties here. We've got three liberties here. Oh, sorry. By three, I of course mean four. Mm -hmm. So one of these is obviously weaker than the other one, along with the two liberties. So we extend our liberties, threatening to kill off... Uh, Threatening to kill off E16. Also threatening to undercut the base on the corner. Black extends, strengthening his cutting stone. Again, matter of uh, liberties and bases and shapes. I mean, this is still undercut here. So go into the corner here. Looks like we're completely fine. Time to run out our stone, I guess. Okay. Time to run out our stone puts pressure on the group, the group has to live. So black comes out. White plays a Hane to aggressively surround him. Black moves to live. White moves to again aggressively surround. Now, according to the normal idea, that, and I'm sorry for harping on this Shark Pro, you had no idea what you were doing when you made the comment. But I thank you for it regardless. That cutting stones are the only stones worth saving, you would probably try to look at F16 and struggle to make them live. Or do something cool. However, we have to kind of go back through that test. Like, if we save these stones, like, what are we doing with them? Are these stones keeping someone from not being alive? Are the group they're cutting off uh, weak? Which would be this one and this one. The outside isn't. The inside kind of is, but it can kind of live in the corner right now. Or it can still, like, escape or something. So there's that to consider. Um, if we leave, if we like get these stones out, then are we able to make a large area again? That's that's a really good uh, consideration, um, which we can't see. Can't really see that. How we go about doing that? I mean, there's our areas over here, and the stones all the way over there. Not really. So instead, we're going to leave that alone for later and just worry about our group right now. Cutting stones again. White saves the outside group because they're dealing with the other cutting stones. They're dealing with the, these. So we don't want our center white stone, our white group, to be weak. Black extends. And white had to spend an entire move to deal with F16 now that black is nice and strong. So in this case, we're seeing the cutting stones are annoying. You're either going to kill them 
as I, you know, killed yours over here. Or you're going to be greedy. In which case, maybe we come back to life. Maybe these still do something. If you don't take care of them, they're going to be an issue again. And now you have to worry about, like, your center group again, your corner group again. You have to worry about all that stuff. So interestingly enough, going back once again to Shark Pro, who probably wishes that I would just die right now, the only stones we're saving, true, can be the cutting stones. But I think I like, I think I like a statement a bit more where the only stones worth dying or worth killing rather are probably also the cutting stones, because. Almost nowhere else would we go out of our way to just kill off two stones, especially at, like, move 28. That's insane. But here we can, because those cutting stones are separating our groups. So... I, th I think I like it maybe worded that way a bit better. Like, the only stones worth killing, especially in the early game, are probably going to be the cutting stones. Because they save so much hassle. If your opponent's overplaying, though, then by all means, save those little guys. They will piss him off a lot. Um, let's see, in this game, we can also see... Uh, I guess so. Yeah, let's, let's go with that over that exercise as well. We've got... Yeah, we have one more exercise in this uh, game that I liked. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty basic. It's pretty basic, but we're going to go over it anyway. So, we killed off this. Black takes time to develop right-hand side. White says, I'm going to build. Black says, fancy that. I am as well. Takes extension. Threatens to extend on framework because we can lead at like uh, L5 or something. Goes into corner. Going into corner, going into corner. Playing the Atari. Uh, basic Jiseki. Got Sente. Able to lean. Build up this huge area. Which means time for reduction. Reduction usually means we're looking for weaknesses, weaknesses like um, low stones to keep low, like we're seeing here. Low stone, going to keep it low. We're seeing ideas like uh, creating cutting points. Any idea why M3 instead of M4? You probably me. He probably has a... Hmm. It's actually a good question there, uh, Oku. Yeah, he is trying to build there. That's true. M4 does have its own unique problems, though. Like, we could play M4, I suppose. But, like, it's a bit awkward if we're kept here. I don't know. This way, we're kind of threatening to come in and invade this area of territory of whites. Here we're probably going to secure it. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't personally consider M4. But you have a point. What was I saying? Yeah, so low stones kept low. Aim for the cutting points for Aji. So we have low stone kept low. Time to flee. Time to reduce. That reduction is a small knight. That small knight gets cut. And now we have to evaluate what we're going to do. There we go. And now we have to decide what we defend and why. Because we're cut. 
Now, people who just like blindly no shapes can probably say, yeah, you're gonna play this, and he's gonna design that, and that. But if you don't like know the shape uh, by heart, then I don't know. Maybe you're new to the game, might not know which stones to protect, like how, because you might think, all right, these stones here, well, they're they're cut off. I mean, that's they're almost surrounded too. I'm gonna play a move over here to defend because I heard that table shapes are amazing. I'm just gonna run away right now because I heard that like getting out from being behind enemy lines is like really cool too. Lucky for us, we know that white cannot capture black this one move. And we do know that because this group is a little bit stronger than the single stone with only two liberties, we're probably going to go and aid that stone instead. So all right, we aid that stone. White comes out. Again, we decide which stone we're going to help. Fairly straightforward. One group's almost surrounded, one group isn't, so we're going to respond. White comes out. Are we in danger of being captured here? No. Our two stones still have nicely four liberties. High doesn't seem to work. If we defend those for some weird reason, that cut though at L14 is going to suck. So we're going to defend those. Cutting stones are super important. This actually has a lot to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We're going to be on this game for a while, it looks like. I have to be reviewing a great deal of this game. I forgot how far into the game these uh, examples were. We cut. Now we're in a little bit of trouble. Going to defend. Our opponent tries to surround us, so we're just going to go and live. Yes, there's a cutting point there, but it's okay. Because if we drop down, then we're threatening to like play 018 if there's a cut, so... We're pretty okay there. Like, if we do this, for example... We're not in danger of being captured right now, but now White just got killed, so... Oops. We played here, we played there. Now there's a cut point. Black's trying to get out. White has designs on that cut point. And connecting. Trying to link up to the previous cutting stones, because those, those are a threat again. We didn't run away with them like a crazy person. We left them as a threat, kind of like we've been seeing uh, the past two games. And sure enough, right here, we can see the value of the cutting stones. It's like, wow, my opponent has to be careful, otherwise he might get himself killed. Chose to not care, so he connects him up. Forced to defense. So I guess to resume the attack. Cutting stones are now back to life. They were not useful before, but now they are. Connects up. Threatens Co, otherwise known as the way I lose every game. Tries to get his stones out, his five stones there in the middle, uh, without getting killed. Does not get distracted. Goes to Ko. Uses these as a co-factory.
Kills off stones. Black says I don't care. And now we've got a large area again. When we have large areas, chances are we're going to have Aji. When we have Aji, we're probably going to have things getting cut. When things are getting cut, we have to decide like how we're going to defend what, when, why. So we have a fresh invasion. Light responds to super aggressively. Threatens to go into the stones. Says, I don't think so. Good way of making shape here, by the way, as well. Worried just about making shape. Guess if you have trouble making shape, you might want to look at this as well. Next time, lecture on amassing threats before a co fight. Uh, if I ever met, if I ever master that, then yeah, GG Petty, that'd be a great, that'd be a great one. We Hane, because we're putting pressure on this group in order to live. We get a response. We get a cut. White now has to decide what's important. Like we have a cutting stone. And up until now, there's kind of been this like vague rule that I've been using. Like, well, how many liberties does each side have, right? Well, usually the stone that only had the two liberties, probably a good idea to go ahead and protect that one. That was like a really generic rule of thumb that someone was probably going to be watching this video and looking at and saying like, ah, I found the answer. Uh, but here to kind of throw you off, because you can see here that this group only has two liberties, which means according to what we've been doing so far, gotta protect that one. Sadly, this group is entirely surrounded. If we did that, we would die. We would protect here, this would get protected, and that would be the end of you. In this case, it's one of the lower the uh, liberty, the smaller liberty count is actually the wrong one to defend because it's completely surrounded. So we have to make every effort to not be surrounded by threatening to capture cutting stones. We give an ultimatum to white, either allow us to surround you or die. White cannot allow that, despite it still being in trouble. And thus we connect out. Invasion successful, long story short, GG black wins. So sometimes we really want to defend those cutting stones, sometimes we really can't because other things are going to die if we do. So you don't want to get like tunnel vision and just respond blindly to things. <clears throat> and that takes us to the last example of this particular game. The next game on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, what? Where was the example in here? There was an example in here, right? Oh, right there. Yeah, okay. This is another example of cutting stones being very, very valuable to us. Not because we're saving them, but because giving them up our opponent having to like spend moves to kill those cutting stones is worth their weight in gold, so to speak. Now, I'm not sure how what the order of these moves are, but I will tell you that uh, King Dong Yun played as black in this game. And if you know who he is, he's a really strong player. I also get to see a micro Chinese variation. Those are always cool. White approaches. We split high. <laughs> uh, so either I'm right and he is in fact a Korean player or he's Japanese. Because high pincers, man. High pincers. White changes directions. Separates. This gets a mm, bit of a weird opening. We play this one. Bit complicated if you don't know it. But that's okay if you don't. Connect here, forces the escape. There's cutting there's cutting points behind. We're gonna take it immediately. 
can threaten to kill the cutting stones. Don't want to do that. We're going to go ahead and not play there either. Thank you. There we go. White's making some nice shape. Black's trying to keep building. Very, very, very mindful of his shape. Black approaches, white backs off. How do we know black uh, was going to force white to back off? Because this area here is trying to be built. Black backs off large. White actually saves his, uh, his uh, corner, which is odd. No invasions there, I suppose. Threatening to come in. Okay. Tries to cover up his weak points. And now we have fun. This obviously is very, very uh, complicated. Not going to spend a lot of time on it. Suffice to say, we're attaching for forcing moves. Not leaving any algae behind. Attaching for forcing moves. Really desperate to do something back in here. Again and again and again, looking for that shape. Can't quite find it. Did manage to kill off a stone, though. And then go back and live. Shame it was slightly in Gote, but that's okay. Once again, trying to build up the top, forcing black to defend. And now we've got something interesting afoot. Wait, what? Is that right? I feel like it's not. Oh yeah, it is. Right, white descends. We have a cutting point. Ooh, white extends, and now we have to decide how are we going to defend this. Once again, we have to make decisions on what stones are more important. And I kind of like how I set this up. What do we do? Which stones are more important? Because this one's actually a little bit complicated. This one's a bit tough. E11 strengthens both next to it. So you're suggesting uh, E11 there, GG Petty? Everyone agreeing? E11, best idea. Because <clears throat> he's right. We could do that. We could do that. We could play here. <clears throat> I think my voice is actually kind of dying today. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, we could do uh, E11. Only one problem with that. I like F12. Um, okay, so either way, you're you're doing you're doing uh, the same. Oh my god. <clears throat> you're saving that one stone. Whoa, rip voice. Either way, you're choosing to play there. The downside with playing there, though, is if we save this stone in any way, shape, or form, we're telling this black group to live immediately. And we're getting that extra, that extra, like, huge wall for white. Because we already know he, he's interested in that top of the board, like, expanding into the middle. And these are actually forcing moves. So in this instance, this, the, what's important takes on a whole board. Takes on a whole board perspective. 
It's like, what stones are weaker? Well, D12 is absolutely the weaker stone. But we can't just like follow rules blindly. We always have to like be on alert for what's going on everywhere. And here, we get completely surrounded if we save the weakest stone. So black comes out. It's like, no, I can't let you completely surround me. In fact, if you let me push you one more time, I might be able to completely surround you. So the weakest stone, a uh, little bit of a trick, a little bit of a trick. The weakest stone, absolutely E12. And you don't want to save it because of everything else going on, on the board right now. Cutting stones are annoying. Extends. We still don't draw back our stone. Because you could have argued that I'm going to play here because the ladder doesn't work. Okay, okay, you could you could have argued that. And then I'd be like, okay, well now I'm going to because well this is getting a little bit bad. But no, 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 no. Instead, black is leaning on the top, so we can get stronger to come out. Maybe later you can bring out the stone if you get strong here in Sente. Wait, what? Hold on, I feel like it's going bad. Do do do. No, I didn't. Wait, did I? I did. Played here, sorry, white, uh, Tari first. And then black leans. White fixes. Gets the surround. Takes advantage of the cut again, because he's looking for that outside. He's willing to give up a little bit of the middle. This is kind of in line with the, um, the, the trying to get the outside. I'm going to sacrifice the corner for influence on the outside. Goody goody gumdrops. White set, black says, are you really doing that? I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Look at me all. Killy, killy, killy. Unfortunately, sacrificing everything is not really what he wants to do. He's going to play here and here. Doesn't quite work exactly as intended. Oops, sorry. Yeah, there and there. Black goes back and attacks. And we have one other interesting little cutting stone problem on this game. As if that one wasn't interesting enough. We have this situation where, again, we've got more and more cutting stones. More and more cutting stones. White descends, because stone's in danger of dying. Threatens double Atari. There is stuff that cuts stuff that cuts stuff. True enough. Threatens to kill stone. Threatens to kill stone. And now again, if we were going to solely go by what's weakest, like where's the biggest problems right now, we'd be like, well, our group over there is a problem. We want to probably play here. But again, there's, there's just that whole surrounding bit again that really sucks. We can go here, here, and here, at which point, a little bit of an issue. Right? I mean, this is, this is Sente, right? We all, we all see that? Because if we don't respond, we're screwed. So this cut is complete Sente. Which means we got to, again, be someone that surrounds and like gets that influential bit that we were hoping for. So what? Black's like, eh, no. I'm not going to deal with that right now. I don't want to be completely surrounded. The white's like, well, what if I kill you? Like, I don't care. You worry about those cutting stones. I'm not going to. I'm just going to live in your corner. Completely. 
And now you have to think about what happens if I draw this out. You have to think about what happens if I connect. I'm going to take your corner in Sente. That way I can just keep dealing with that influential crap that you're trying to you're trying to make. As a result, White's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's if I want to make any influence here ever, I have to go on the attack right now. I can't worry about those cutting stones either. You trying to like, draw out D6 can't I don't care. You saving D9, I can't don't care about that either. Because this is what I was this is what I've been playing the game for. If I worry about that stuff right now, then I'm never getting this attack in on top of the board. So I'm going to play here, because that's what's bigger. So we were kind of like fighting um, the left and this top bit, both having to decide, is drawing my cutting stones out larger? Like, with so which side? What's going on on the board? Are these cutting stones really worth, like, all of that? And the answer was no. So. You have to be very, very weary of that as well. Like usually, we draw our cutting stones if we can like build something large when we grow up. When we're like uh, doing that, let's say like the top of the board. Like the, the first game we went over was a clear cut example. That was like a really brilliant example uh, that we went over. I think was it the first game? It was right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was here. No, it was here. Close. It was here. Yeah, we drew out our cutting stones because. There's the potential to just like build up this insanely large area depending on how our opponent responds. So we drew him out asking the question, can I profit like a bandit? And the answer was no, so like, okay, I'll let you worry about the cutting stones later. We'll, we'll get back to it. And then from there, we went into the question of, like we gradually went into the question of, well, is this even worth... Was it this game? I feel like it might not be. I'm terrible. No, it was this game. Yeah, and then from there we went to this, long, this question of like, well, is it even worth it to save the cutting stone that's weaker? Cutting stones are a very, very complicated topic. Very, very complicated topic. And you can kind of see why. You can kind of see why. But hopefully you have a better idea on how you can use them to your advantage, either by like just drawing it out once, seeing how your opponent responds, maybe you can profit, um, leaving them for later, use them for reduction, that kind of good deal. But always, always, always remember that even saving the cutting stones might not be worth as much as the overall like whole board, uh, uh, whole board value. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and you can now have a newfound hatred for cutting stones and how complicated it is to either save them, not save them. I do agree with going back to Shark Pro, who's still in the lecture and hasn't censored me. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, I do like what he said. Cutting stones are only worth, worth saving. True, but they're definitely probably the ones worth killing. And you can definitely see why. So, hope you enjoyed the lecture. I'll see you next week for yet another one. If you guys have no questions, then I will go get dinner. <laughs>